The new Raspberry Pi 5 brings forth the mix of fresh and familiar features, catering to the realm of low-power computing. While in the past, my negative critiques have been aimed more at the Raspberry Pi Foundation and founder Eben Upton than the hardware itself, as it seems Eben's focus has clearly shifted from education and makers to industry and profit over the years. But despite my personal reservations, I must acknowledge the impressive strides made with the Raspberry Pi 5. Let's delve into some of the key highlights, comparing it to its predecessor, the Raspberry Pi 4. The Pi 5 boasts a faster and more efficient CPU and GPU, running at 2.4 GHz compared to the Pi 4's 1.8, with the Pi 5 sporting an upgraded GPU clocked at 800 MHz versus 500 MHz. Notably, the Pi 5 also supports dual 4K displays at 60Hz on both ports, outperforming the Pi 4's capability of handling 4K 60Hz on only one port during dual use. While both support SSD drives, the Pi 5 stands out with its compatibility for M.2 NVMe SSDs through a new PCI 2.0 interface. The most significant improvements lie in the I.O. package. The Pi 5 features a 2x4 lane MIPI camera display ports, a new PCI 2.0x1 interface, potentially capable of running at 3.0 speeds with some tricks, a UR breakout, RTC clock power, and a 4-pin fan power port. Notably absent in the Pi 4, the Pi 5 also introduces a soft power button. Despite the emphasis on enhanced connectivity, it's worth noting that the Pi 5 now requires 5 volts, 4 amps, up from the Pi 4's 5 volts, 3 amps. Both models support power over the Ethernet PoE via PoE hats, but they lack backward or forward compatibility, meaning Pi 4 PoE hats won't work on the Pi 5 and vice versa. Presently, there are limited options that exist for the Pi 5 in regards to PoE, with WaveShare offering one of the few solutions in the market at this time. In one of my last videos, I showcased how I integrated the Pi 5 with the Pi Moroni NVMe base, achieving a sleek, rack-mounted setup, but I still had to rely on bulky power bricks to power each of the Pis. The WaveShare PoE hat provided the solution, featuring a metal heatsink and a built-in fan. It's super easy to install, just pop on the thermal tape, place the heat sink on via the spring-loaded pins, then simply just install the PoE hat onto the GPIO pins of your Raspberry Pi and you're ready to power it by the Ethernet. This setup has proven both efficient and reliable, with all five Pi units drawing only about 4.3 to 4.5 watts each, even with NVMe usage. I've been using them for about a week now and I've had zero issues. While alternatives to the Raspberry Pi for small, silent computing exist, they often lack the peripheral support and the vibrant community that the Pi enjoys. But WaveShare is quietly making a name for itself in this arena, both with these new hats and some pretty rad displays. In conclusion, the Raspberry Pi 5 with its enhanced speed and feature pack design addresses overdue concerns and continues to benefit from a supportive community and innovative add-on companies like WaveShare. While this review is unsponsored, and don't worry, the links aren't affiliate links, I do invite you to explore both the Pi Moroni base, the WaveShare, and this pretty cool Pi Rack I found, all linked below. But don't just take my word for it. I encourage each and every one of you to immerse yourself in the Pi 5 experience and the Pi 5 community. As always, thanks for watching, and please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Ill Phantom, and I'll catch you next time.